And welcome back to the latest anime news for the week ending May 8th, 2021. Let's get right into it, shall we? Uh, on Tuesday, Yen Press announced Yen Audio, a new imprint for audiobooks. Hmm. The company will partner with Hatchet Audio to produce, sell, and distribute digital audiobooks. And along with the announcement, Yen Press revealed the first five novel series will receive audiobooks along with a release schedule. These are all obviously anime and manga related. First up will be volume one of the Korean novel series Solo Leveling in July. Uh, this is interesting. The premise is that, um, uh, if I recall correctly, so monsters show up in the world, um, start, you break through into the, into the real world, uh, people manif manifesting superpowers. The main character is some South Korean guy who has manifested superpowers, but he's, you know, he has the lowest level superpowers. Anybody he can't do anything. <laughs> um, and then he basically gets trapped in a dungeon with a bunch of high level monsters. No one makes it out. Then he wakes up in a hospital with a whole bunch of superpowers. As a, um, and he has this new rank of player where he now can pull up a screen and see all of his stats. And he's like, wait a minute, I'm in the real world, aren't I? Mm -hmm. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. So <laughs> that's coming uh, as an audiobook, followed by the first volume of Sword Art Online in August. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. September will bring the first volume of Overlord. And wow. yeah. And November will bring volumes uh, one of the Miracles of the Namiya General Store, which I'll get to in a second, and the Saga of Tanya the Evil. Um, Jeez, come on. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh, I, I so want to hear those. Okay, yeah. Overlord and Tanya. Yeah. Oh, I so want to hear yeah. those. Yeah. Um, oh. uh, the Namiya General Store is a uh, very successful uh, standalone novel. Uh, the idea is uh, three guys um, whose the car they stole have broken down and so they sneak into this general store this shuttered and discover that the general store has this reputation that if you ask the proprietor a question he will try to answer it and so it's turned into sort of a dear abbey for the local community where people will just slip envelopes into the front of the store just at odd, at odd hours and then you know he'll he'll basically post a response to them um, uh, in like a, a letter thing in the back, and so they're there at you know two a.m. and a letter drops in the in there, and they don't know what it is. They open it, they figure what's going on, and they're like, "Oh, well, and boy, that's a tough thing. Yeah, tough, tough problem they have. Yeah. Let's well, see. I, here's what I do, um, and they all start you know getting into the idea of answering these letters and so forth. They kind of get pulled into into the the DRM oh. thing. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, so it sounds, sounds sweet. Um, subsequent volumes of SAO, Solo Living, and Overlord are also on the schedule. Uh, voice cast and narrators will be announced at a later date. Uh, and they also plan to release regular seasonal adaptations later on. Uh, 2020 was a record year for Yen Press, with the manga market taking a significant upswing in the summer that has continued uh, through to 2021. Their sales increased so much the Yen Press has even been have, having difficulties scheduling printer time and keeping books Ooh. stocked due to wow. printer capacity issues with the publishing industry. Wow. Yeah. They don't know where to put the dump trucks full of money. Pretty much. Oh, what do we do? What do, we do? <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, me? Yeah. Me? Yeah. <laughs> I'll take a, take a couple hundred thousand dollars. God. Absolutely. Uh, I'm just really interested in how how are these things going to sound like overboard yeah. i the way the anime <laughs> yeah. the way the voice yeah. actors are for the anime is so in my head the way mm -hmm. tanya right. sounds mm -hmm. tanya de Groyshoff, the way she just wow i i would love yeah. that they got the anime voice cast mm -hmm. to do this because otherwise i don't man that might be like jarring to try and hear like <laughs> what they're going to do with that and like, they, they did say it's voice casts and narrators will be announced so presumably yeah. it's, it's not it's going to be fully voiced Oh, please possible. be the original cast, please. We'll see. <laughs> well, and that's the other problem is that they may not be able to, like, union right. stuff. Yeah. So we'll see. <sighs> yeah. Um, but interesting. I never thought I would see the day when we're having anime audiobooks. Yeah. Basically. It's that's really weird. That's really cool. <laughs> right. Um, and to be fair, or, or to kind of dig deeper on that, like, you know, 
we all have problems, like you're saying, when do we have time for books? You know, as we get back yeah. to normal, we'll have commutes and so forth. Great. You want to read Overlord, put it on during your commute, and you can, you know, go through that, that book. Yeah. Pretty cool. Oh, and if it's and if it's so well done, it's going to be like an entire joy because the whole it'll all play in your head. <laughs> yeah, you're driving um, along doing whatever you're doing. Although <gasps> now you have the issue of you know how good are the light novels? Like I've I've read some light novel originals where I'm like, oh, uh, I'll go back to the <laughs> anime now. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, I hadn't thought of that part. <laughs> we'll see. We'll, we'll find out. Who knows? Um, remember, you know they um, uh, they tone it down every time it gets adapted. <laughs> Right, so by the time it gets to the anime, it's way toned down versus the visual novel, or mm. light novel. Uh, remember yeah. when I talked about No Game, No Life, where it's like, oh! Uh, yeah. So, we'll, we'll see. Mm. Um, speaking of publishers, uh, this week, Katakawa Corporation announced its goals for the next two years as part of its fiscal year ending presentation. Unsurprisingly, one of its six main goals before March 2023 is strengthening its animation business. And to achieve this goal, the company aims to improve its production system so it can produce 40 new animation titles a year. Uh, uh. Yeah. We 40, can barely get zero. through. Brand new? Brand, like, not like sequel stuff. Like, absolutely brand new titles. 40 new animation titles a year. We can, we can barely get through what we have now. <laughs> yeah, no joke. In the fiscal year that just ended, how many fo- uh, animation titles do you think they, they made? Is it going to be higher than 40? 40. 35. Ah, What's that? 40. Uh, so they're just trying to, to maintain what they maintain. managed to do oh. last year. Oh, okay. Uh, that's 31 TV series, five films, and four OVAs or event animation projects. Um, okay. So to continue this, to, hit, to hit this target, they're considering establishing a world-class 3D CG production studio, gathering the world's best creators. I'm sure they are. Um, they're also uh, uh, aiming to expand sales of anime-related games, shocker, um, uh, increase license revenue, and strengthen efforts with its ally, Cyber Agent, and Sony, which, oh, yeah, seems like ah. a good idea. Yeah. Um, the company also revealed that both its net <clears throat> sales and operating pro- profit for the last fisc- fiscal year were record high numbers, with the operating profit seeing were. a 68% increase from the previous year. Oh, oh, dang. Yeah. Those are the kind of numbers you love to see as a company. Wow. Yeah, no so, joke. Katakawa. I think Katakawa is the first publisher that I saw that actually puts their logo on the anime they make. You know, that, that Katakawa Phoenix that comes in. Yeah. 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 You know, a couple of years ago, they started being like, no, 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 no this is our, like, we, we, we did this. Katakawa, buy more of our <laughs> stuff. You know? Us. <laughs> Well, if they want a world-class wow. CGI animation mm-hmm. studio, why don't they just put an offer in on Pixar? Oh, sure. Oh, What's Pixar? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. More money than anything ever. <laughs> Disney would ask for that. <laughs> there is no Pixar. Did they, is it now Disney yeah. feature production animation? Uh, they, they, they folded into Disney. That's not a thing anymore. Like They're, they're a division of Disney now. They could buy John Lasseter. Just default <laughs> that, that division out from Disney. I could actually see that happening. I, I could see Lasseter kind of going, you want me to do what? I'm, in, I'm intrigued. Well, especially if he's probably got the money now to go, yeah, whatever yeah. I want to do. Uh, he's, he's, yeah, he's not having money problems now, I am sure. No. Yeah, no. Um, and he's heading up animation over there, I think. He's sort of the... The guy he is, he is the animation guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, certainly on the production on the, on the, the producer side. Um, um, meanwhile, electronics giant HTC announced on Tuesday they'll partner with Bandai Namco Pictures to create virtual reality anime content for the Vive Port, ATC, uh, HTC's VR application store. Um, it'll focus initially on creating new animated content and intellectual property and integrating animated content and distribution resources between the two companies. I have no idea what that means. Um, they also promise new content within the next few months. Huh. So anime and VR. VR. Yeah. We've seen this before. There's only plenty of anime-themed VR material. Mm-hmm. Um, there's the uh, Spice and Wolf VR thing that I think has already come out or is soon to come out where they're telling an original story in VR in the Spice and Wolf universe. 
Um, so you kind of you know, put on the VR headset and you walk around and the characters are doing and saying stuff. And you've definitely seen stuff with Patsuke Miku concerts. And there was a fate thing a while back where you see the now, fate Do you characters. interact in there? Mm-hmm. Or do you, or are you just sort of like sitting in a large screen theater and just see things going on? Depends on the, on, on the thing. Um, the Hatsune Miku concert is obviously concert you know, design, so you can, you can be in different parts of the stadium, right, right. and see it from different angles and such. Um, but, like, the, uh, the, the, the fate thing, um, you get, like, prompts. So the character walks into the room, and then you say, okay, you know, do you say this? Do you want them to do this? Do you want them to sit down, stand up, whatever? Um, and they, 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 they do what you tell them to do, basically. See, I, that's what I would like about it, is, like, interactivity. Yeah. Not mm-hmm. just passive watching, but, like, the ability to be sort of in my favorite anime. Yeah. I'm not sure what's going on with... Oh, hey, Papa. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with um, uh, the Spice and Wolf thing, because it sounded like it was sort of a, for lack of a better word, like a VR movie, where it's like, this is going to be a set story that plays out. It's not, not going to be interactive in that sense. But it also sounded like it's going to be in VR, so there's going to be some way of, like... I don't know, moving around or seeing it from different angles or whatever, right? So I don't know. We'll see. John, I can I can totally see you actually us never seeing you again. They put out an um bury. Yeah. Yeah. VR. <laughs> I'm just hanging out at the candy store with <laughs> uh, and the girls yeah. just chilling out, um, going bike riding, and catching the, tadpoles. Yeah, hell yeah. And the thing is, the cell shading has gotten to the point where it's like that, that fate thing, I played some of it and I'm like, Yep, that's that's clearly Saber, like that's clearly Rin, like that's clearly those characters, you know, right. it doesn't feel weird anymore. Mm. Um, oh, we'll see how let's see how this goes. That's yeah, very interesting. Um, hopefully there'll be a, a like Otacon or some big con mm-hmm. that'll have some of these sets that might we could use. And this is the problem is it's HTC only, it's just for the Vive. So it's just that uh, headset. Gotcha. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, Does HTC have much of a presence in the U.S. that I'm that, that would show up at a con and um, other than San Diego Comic Con? Yeah, uh, I don't know. I, don't know. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, they're certainly a huge hardware company, but for, you know, yeah. on the anime side, I don't know. And that could be one of those things. When this is kind of why I, I you know, wanted to, to mention this in the news is that having um, having <laughs> a major hardware company partnering with a major content company to say we're going to make stuff indicates that there's, you know, there's going to be a serious level of commitment to this, right? This isn't just, you right. know, hey, we announced a game. It's Bandai's going to be making, you know, cool stuff for us. So hopefully we'll, we'll see some interesting stuff out of that. I hope so. Gundam and VR. Just saying. Ooh. Bandai. It's, well, it could happen. Uh, uh, oh. Yeah, that's, that's what we're talking about there. Oh, gosh, that should be in the Steve gets his seat. Gundam. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. A Vive may be in the future of your household. We'll, we'll see. Wow. Okay. And now Steve disappears. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I'm trapped in Nan Nan Bury and Steve's stuck in a Gundam. <laughs> yeah, totally. Get in the um, Gundam, Steve. Great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if all they had was a Gundam, you know, um, um, was a simulator of, of being in a Gundam just in the hangar. And if I could just go around the hangar, get in a Gundam, get out of the Gundam, you know, go, that, that'd be it. I'd spend an evening in there. Totally. You know, <laughs> you know, I, I would be totally down for it as long as nobody slaps me in the face. I'll be right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can we clap for you in a circle when you get out? Uh, different franchise. That'd be creepy. I'd just go back in. <laughs> but it would still be fun. <laughs> um, there we go. Evangelion VR. That that that's the dream. <laughs> that that might be a great every anime that's the dream. where you get trapped in an even going. Ooh, VR. there we go. Yeah, <laughs> the perfect anime. Is it real? Is it VR? Call Ano. Ano, oh, no. there's there's your next thing. Go for it. Make all the money. Make it make a trippy mind mind. Every alien is a guy. It just yeah, perfect. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> also this week. Stories we wanted to mention, but not necessarily go into more detail, um, potentially. Speaking of Anno, Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0, Thrice Upon a Time, has crossed the 8.25 billion yen mark as of this week, which means it's officially surpassed Shin Godzilla to become um, Anno's highest earning film in Japan. Um, During a stage appearance in April, Anno noted that fans might propel the film past Eva 3.0 and Shin Godzilla set a new record for him, and added the film could exceed 10 billion yen. And if so, it would bode well for the revitalization of the anime industry. Who knows? 
Um, but, you know, congratulations. Um, a second season has been revealed for the Made in Abyss television anime. Uh, the second season is subtitled The Sun Blazes Upon the Golden City and will debut sometime in 2022. Um, it was also announced that a 3D action RPG is in the works of the franchise, subtitled Binary Star Falling Into Darkness, which will feature a fully voiced original sure. story supervised by manga creator Akihito Tsukushi. Which I've still been afraid to watch made oh. the best. <laughs> you know, like good. Oh. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, that's and that's why because yeah. of what you guys have said about it. Like, oh. granted, you've seen the worst of it. Like, like you you've seen the bits that, that, that traumatize me for life. Yeah. Um, everything else. Which is I, sunrise, sunrise which and roses. it's easy to like watch that kind of part of it yeah because i have no connection with exactly. any other, anything yeah so mm -hmm. it's like that's what i'm afraid of is to be yeah. like okay now when those things lock into the whole story mm -hmm. and i understand it all i'll be like <laughs> oh yes oh yes precisely. Yeah. precisely i'm not ready for that yet um by the way <laughs> i look how many years <laughs> um by the way i looked up the creator's like art like like the, his pixiv account and so forth and so on and mm -hmm. a little creepy Little creepy, little creepy. Um, huh? uh, his little girls um, are often flip, uh, have their skirts flipped up. Um, there's there's uh, just enough of that kind of stuff to be. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, also, I will you know, not to get off on a, on a, on a soapbox, but there is reference to in every single episode that I can recall of one or both of those two kids getting naked. Take a bath or as punishment for something, you know, get spanked or something. And it's like, mm-mm. 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 Anyway. Yeah. It's there. So. I, and, and I say that because I adored that movie that was going to become one of my favorite um, you know uh, uh, series that's gonna be one of my favorite series of all time until like episode 10 so and I, it just fell I'm, right I'm off scarred. the cliff yeah it, you <laughs> yeah. know it, it, it pushed me off the cliff um anyway um moving on to happier things a fourth tv anime series and a brand new anime film project has been greenlit for overlord uh, the new season of the show will adapt the tenth novel volume, and the film project will cover the Holy Kingdom arc. Wow! Mm. Yeah, um, I'm excited for that. Um, DLE announced this week it's partnered with ABC Frontier, marketing company Mash, and production so company Hello Inc. Yeah, <laughs> um, to produce a new original anime project named Yoshi Maho Yoshi Yoshi Magic. Um, the anime will feature a first-person point of view where <clears throat> the overworked and exhausted protagonist is transformed into a child and cared for at a magical daycare. You heard that right. So you get to have your little hands like grabbing blocks and toys and yeah, stuff? apparently. But with huh. magic. Okay. <sighs> it's going to be amazing. Or... Very much not amazing, I, I bet. Just, or just horrifying on just some horrifying. level. Well, I mean, it's the, uh, there's a chance it, it'll show up um, on our watching yeah. schedule at some point. I mean, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll check it out. Maybe. <laughs> um, we'll see whether it's any good, because mm -hmm. I'll be curious to see. Now, here's a question. What is the point at which a movement becomes... Um, um, a classic for all time. At what point does it stop becoming a fad, and we know that this is a thing that will be with us forever? When there's a museum for it. An Isekai Museum exhibit is coming to the Katakawa Culture Museum from July to September, featuring storyboards, key animation, and artwork from ReZero, Overlord Konosuba, and the Saga of Tanya the Evil. Yay. Um, uh, the official website. All, yeah. Um, the official website's also, I love this, they've launched a quiz testing fans' knowledge on the franchises. Uh, the, beginner, the, the beginner level uh, quiz opened on May 1st, and the intermediate and advanced quizzes will launch in June and July. And if you get a perfect score on the beginner level, you're entered into a drawing for an original badge that acknowledges your expertise 
And it's great because there are only a hundred questions on the quiz. Now, original sounds like badge. my wine certification. Days. <laughs> yeah. Is this one of those badges like you get like a digital badge where it's like you're the top fan or something like that? I, I, it I doubt up. it because you're in a drawing. So if you get entered into a drawing court, uh, they're probably going to produce. You think it's a real badge? It's probably a real physical badge. I I, I, I gotta go. <laughs> I'm <your man. laughs> just gotta get ten. You just gotta get a hundred questions perfect, correct? Well, I wonder if it's timed because I could watch all those. See, I've already seen all the series, so I could watch them all again and answer each question very carefully over the next seventy days. You have ten minutes. Oh god! Yeah, that would be not good. <laughs> Perfect score, a hundred questions. Yeah. Wow. Welcome to Japan. Um, wow. This is the one. The thing gonna... is, is someone will win oh, it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. and again, to be clear. You're going to be entered into a drawing. So they think enough people are going to get it correct that they have to open it up to that many people. Yeah. <laughs> um, the literature rock band called The Elites revealed this week that band member Tatsuhiko Takamoto has written a sequel short story to his 2002 novel. Yeah. Welcome to the NHK. That's where that came from. From a member of a rock band. Uh, huh. The new wow. yeah, the new work is titled, surprisingly, "New Welcome to the NHK," um, <laughs> and will be available as part of their Volume Three anthology publication on May sixteenth. Um, so that is coming. Um, looking forward to that. Um, there is both a manga adaptation and a, tw a twenty-four episode TV anime. Um, the Niji Sanji VTuber group began streaming the first two of its animated snack time shorts on YouTube this week. Um, mm. So if you're interested in VTuber anime, mm. that is a thing that exists now. Uh, the Japanese State of Emergency has been extended until the end of May in Tokyo, Osaka, Kyoto, and Hyogo prefectures. Um, and then Aichi and Fukuoka will be uh, under a state of emergency starting May 12th. Um, large department stores will be asked to close by 8 p.m. And events must end at 9 p.m. And... No more than 5,000 attendees. No more than 5,000. You know, reasonable numbers. So, like, just your friend, a couple of right. friends, and some family. Exactly, huh. yeah. Um, yeah. 5,000. Wow. Yes. Jesus. <laughs> so, no Kermit Cat, but everything else is fine. I was going to say, do you know how many venues in Roanoke that would die to have <laughs> at least 5,000? They, they're, they're happy to get 1,000, maybe even 500 people. They'd be like, five, yay! Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Only so, a yeah. Scale is different. Scale is different. Yeah. Right yeah. Um, no, no joke. Finally, the results of the worldwide One Piece World Top 100 character popularity poll were announced this week. Three guesses as to who was the top. Uh, I only know one. Uh, character. Yeah. <laughs> then you're probably right. Um, Monkey D. Luffy came out first overall. After him were Roronor uh, Zoro, Nami, Sanji. Trafalgar Law, and Nico Robin. Um, along with the worldwide ranking, the results were compiled regionally as well, which led to some interesting differences. For example, X Drake, a character who's considered to be of a Turkish design, uh, made it only to 41st overall, but second place in Turkey. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Um, H.R. Oda will create a new illustration featuring the top 50 characters from the poll. Um, and also noted that uh, he had seen some movements organized by fans to come together and vote for unexpected characters, and he also noted that the production team totally knew about it, and it didn't get by them at all. <laughs> Why do people keep doing it? This is like the naming the, the Noah uh, mm. side-scanning deep radar thing. Yeah. Bodie, Bodie McBoatface. Mm. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, you get something together and do something crazy, and folks are going to figure these things yeah. out. Like, that's pretty funny we're, we're gonna figure it out at some point but yeah um so yeah so that's been the news for the week uh and we'll see you next mm -hmm. week for more news <laughs>